During the transatlantic slave trade, as Europeans were kidnapping Africans from the coast of Africa, there were a vast array of tactics developed by the West Africans to defend themselves. And these were with the sole purpose to avoid capture. Many Africans left their townships for more easily defensible terrain. Africans settled in harsh desert environments and some even built their towns on water. Lake Naku and the swamplands surrounding uh, Lake Naku provided an ideal refuge for various refugees who came to constitute a homogenous ethnic group called the Tofino. So we have multiple different tribes and ethnicities who fled into Lake uh, Naku to then later become known as the Tofino, one homogenous group. Sikasso in southern Mali was heavily fortified and successfully withstood a siege for over 15 months. Now this is a phenomenal amount of time. A siege is essentially when uh, an invading army will, in trying to conquer the, the home territory, will cause the home territory army and the civilians to flee within inside the city walls. They will then lay siege to that city, which is essentially a war of attrition, i.e. who's going to last longest. The invading army will rely on their supply line to bring in fresh food and water, and the city's only hope is that they have stored enough food and water to see them through the siege. Now, both sides would be vulnerable to starvation and to dehydration and disease um, if the supply lines are cut and if the city runs out of food. But to have 15 months worth of supplies is a phenomenal amount of time. Other cities built fortresses with vantage points for riflemen with walls that stretched over one kilometer long and which were over 10 foot high. A song heard on Gory Island in the 18th century hauntingly expresses the feeling of irremediable, irremediable loss and despair, as well as a strong will to be reunited with the captive's loved ones, <clears throat> even if this was in the afterlife, by you know, unfortunately going through the ultimate sacrifice of committing suicide or by dying in, in warfare. Now, Gori Island is an island off of West Africa where many enslaved Africans were taken. And this is, is their story. They're singing these songs of despair, um, wanting to be re reunited with their loved ones. This is the song. Damo, i.e. the king, has raided the village of Yene. He has enslaved the woman that I love. Since then I have so much pain that I cannot drink palm wine and I cannot eat couscous. My love is going to be shipped to the islands. I will be, I will ask to be made a slave to be with her. I, I will voluntarily uh, become enslaved to at least mean that I'm close to my loved one. I'd rather be a slave with her than a free man in a place where she no longer is. This was a poem which was written at the time on Gory Island. My task to you is the African resistance against slavery is often forgotten. A more common narrative is that the European forces saw the errors of their ways and then illegalised slavery. Why do you think that the resistance of the Africans against enslavement is often left uncovered or untold? Why would people be motivated to tell a history which basically portrays the Africans of being, as being passive in their own destiny and in their own fight and as the Europeans being the the sole contributor of harm and withdrawal of that harm. Why, what is the story which is being told and why is it being told this way when we know that the Africans offered up such a resistance? Feel free to converse under the guidance of your teacher and then when you're ready we can continue with the rest of the presentation.